Hi, I'm Marley Matlin. Getting stopped by the police, even at a routine traffic stop, can often be a scary experience. For those of us who are deaf or hard of hearing, it can be even scarier. When officers often don't realize we can't hear them, it can lead to confusion or worse. Constantly, we see news accounts of miscommunication between law officers and deaf drivers and pedestrians. These reports range from wrongful arrests to brutal beatings to even homicides. It is the job of the police to make sure that they are following the law and that they receive training on how to interact with our community. But the more educated we are about our rights, the more comfortable we can feel about asserting them when interacting with law enforcement. As the wife of a law officer, as well as a deaf person, I know that police culture and deaf culture can be very different, and this video is here to bridge the gap. Some of what I'm going to explain you may recognize from TV. Some of it is specific to those of us who are deaf or hard of hearing. Also, what I'm about to share applies to everyone, regardless of your immigration or your citizenship status. The first thing you can do is to be prepared. Have a sign in your car visor and a wallet-sized piece of paper in your wallet that says, I am deaf or I am hard of hearing. And that also states your preferred means of communication. Now you're ready to go for a drive. A routine traffic stop is the time that most Americans interact with police. If you're pulled over for any reason, first stop your car in a safe place as quickly as possible. Roll down your window, turn off the car, and place your hands on the wheel. Once you've made eye contact with the officer, use the universal sign of deafness. Many officers will understand it. If that doesn't work, gesture that you need a pen and paper to write. Do not touch the officer at any time. Although culturally deaf and hard of hearing people tend to touch, the police officer might perceive being touched as a threat. If you need the officer's attention, wave or voice if possible. At a routine traffic stop, it's highly unlikely that an interpreter will be called. However, if you do not understand what's going on, you should repeatedly request, in writing, that an interpreter or another aid to help is needed, such as real-time captioning or an assistive listening device. The requests should be made in writing to as many officers that are present. Once you've made your request, don't try to keep communicating until your request has been honored. Expect to be asked for your driver's license, registration, and insurance. The officer may gesture to ask for these. Point to where you are getting your papers and get the officers to acknowledge that they understand before you reach. Police are allowed to pat down your clothing if they reasonably suspect a weapon is present. But if the police want to search further, you have the right to say no. You have the right to refuse a search of yourself, your car, or your home. Do not physically resist, but don't agree to show them anything in your pockets, or on your person, or in your belongings. If you agree to a search, anything they find may be presented in court as evidence against you. If you have been detained, but have not been arrested, you have the right to ask the officer whether you are free to leave. If the answer is yes, do so calmly. If the answer is no, you must remain on the scene even if you have not been placed under arrest. If you are stopped by an officer for questioning on the street, remember to always ask if you are free to leave before walking away. If you are, then walk away calmly. If you are arrested, often, if you are stopped by an officer in your car or on the street, you will either be let go immediately or given a ticket. But if you are arrested, here are additional things you should know. Don't say you understand something unless you understand all of what you have been told or read. Do not sign any document unless your attorney is present and you understand all of what it means. Do not resist arrest, even if you think the arrest is unfair. Because a lot of us use our hands to communicate, 
when being arrested, we try to speak, and officers often perceive this action as resisting arrest. If the officers want to put cuffs on you, let them have your hands. If you remain calm, when you arrive at the police station, the cuffs will likely come off or be placed in front of your body to ensure that you can communicate effectively. But, as you probably know from TV, you have the right to remain silent. Let the officer know if you want to exercise that right by writing that down on a piece of paper. You also have the right to an attorney and an interpreter. Ask for both immediately and in writing. At the police station, immediately inform the arresting and booking officers that you are deaf or hard of hearing and of your preferred means of communication. You have the right to make a local phone call through accessible telecommunications that is available at and provided by the facility. The police cannot listen or watch if you call your attorney. During interrogations, the interpreter must be a certified interpreter who is impartial. Officers are not allowed to use your family members or friends to interpret for you. Police officers are also unable to serve as impartial interpreters. So, even if the officer is signing, you should wait for the certified interpreter to arrive. Even after the interpreter arrives, do not talk to the police until your attorney arrives. Ask your attorney whether or not you should speak with the police. Write down key information that may be hard to remember later, such as names of people you interact with, times, and requests for accommodations, any denials of requests, and forms that you have filled out. Keep all the notes that are written between you and the officers, and make sure your attorney knows you have exchanged notes or otherwise communicated with the police, and whether or not you were able to keep the notes. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, but if you feel your rights have been violated, here's what you should do. What to do if your rights are violated. Write down important facts, including the officer's badge and patrol car numbers, which agency the officers were from, and any times you asked for accommodations. Get contact information from witnesses. If you're injured, take photographs of your injuries, but seek medical attention first. File a written complaint with the agency's Internal Affairs Division, or Civilian Complaints Board. Call your local ACLU chapter and let them know what happened. You can find your local chapter at aclu.org. Remember, we have rights. Go to the website on the screen.